back. Bob Chapman riding shotgun with us throughout the hour, taking your phone calls and, well, getting into the incredibly important economic news that I'm about to get into and then get Bob's expert analysis and take on it. Last week, uh, well, he, he called the big dip in gold with total precision. It, it's almost sickeningly uh, accurate. We posted his articles from the International Forecaster at Infowars.com two weeks ago before that happened. He did it a day and a half before. Then he predicted exactly what it's now done today. It's getting right up there close to 1900 again. Um, and so we're going to get his take on where we're going through the rest of the year with gold, silver, the economy, uh, and your phone calls. But if you just joined us, there was a caller earlier, Aaron in Nevada. And I guess he's still there. And I'm not going to turn this into a 10-hour uh, discussion. But, but let me explain something. I don't cover things generally from the angle of the pro-Israel lobby or the anti-Israel lobby. Okay? When I was mainly a mainline conservative 16, 17 years ago, and there's clips of this on the web, I was, the UN doesn't like Israel, the globalists don't like it, so Israel's okay. My understanding has gotten more sophisticated. But I actually have an allergy to Israel. Okay? I'm sick of hearing about it. Those people are all going to be killing each other forever, and I'm tired of it. I don't obsess over Australia. I don't obsess over Austria. I don't obsess over Chile. I don't obsess over Timbuktu. And I'm just sick of my whole life having to hear about Israel, 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 Palestine, Palestine. And then since I've been on air 16 plus years, weirdos, man, trying to get me to take on their pet project of you won't talk about Scientologist all day. You must be one. Look, there's a guy named Alex Jones in Scientology. It's me. No, it's not. I'm not some 65-year-old guy with black hair. Or, or Alex works for the Vatican. He spoke at a Catholic university once when he was asked to speak. You know, on and on and on. I'm not, I'm not any of these things, okay? I don't, I don't even go to mainline church except occasionally, and it's Methodist and Baptist. I'm just a guy who wants peace and liberty. I want my republic. I want the foreign banks out of my country. But a guy calls in, and he says... Why aren't you covering Palestinian statehood vote in the U.N.? Because I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. It's dumb. Nothing's going to change. Israel's an armed camp with 400 to 800 high-powered nukes, submarines, jets. If Palestinians or, or Arabs or uh, uh, the, from the Golan out of uh, Syria come across, they're going to get shot. And, and, and now you've got an Arab spring going on over there that's globalist funded. We told you years before they were about to do this, and it's just a giant quagmire. And there's other things going on other than this, and I'm tired of it. And and it's just an example of the – it's like it's like uh, common Elenin. People telling me i got to cover this. It's not going to kill us in October. I have my own issues that I'm into. And the sickening religion of obsessing on Israel and bashing Israel, it's sickening. And the sickening r political religion of worshiping Israel, but people that aren't even Israelites or from Israel, Israelis, uh, obsessing and, and, and tying it into everything that doesn't even matter. I mean, it's like I'll talk about the uh, price of tea in China and I get some comment about you're just bashing Israel. I'm sick of it. I'm so tired of people cornering me and going, Alex, I really like you, but is it true you're anti-Semitic? You know, I told the story once. I've told it a lot now and I'm going to Bob Chapman. And I'll give a last comment to Aaron in Nevada, but but I appreciate Bob Holding, internationalforecaster.com. I had a dog named Helmet, and I got him in high school. It was uh, a uh, runaway lab, and we took him and put posters up to make it find out where you know whose he was. So we had the dog, and then I went away to college. I had him in the apartment, and he would he would he would uh, dig out under the little little tiny backyard thing at the apartment and. He finally got hit by a car, and uh, they wanted to chop his entire front right leg off. And I said, no, let's just see if the nerves come back. And actually, most of them did come back, but he had to, part of the muscle was dead, no nerve, he had to throw it forward. And I and my parents had three and a half acres, they still do. Well, well that comes in a moment. The point is that I would take him to dog parks, and I would, and he liked to jog, and I go for two or three mile jog with him, and he'd be swinging his foot forward while he ran. And um, this, uh, and, and, and women mainly would say, "Oh, what's wrong with your puppy? What's wrong with him? What happened to him?" And they would talk to the dog like I wasn't there. 
And I'm like, and, and like, did he do something to you? And the first 300 or 400 times, I would just say, no, he was hit by a car. He was hit by a car. No, he was hit by, well, why is he done? Well, they wanted to chop his leg off. So it, it's partially paralyzed, but he's able to move it. He's happy. But, oh, well, oh, maybe you take him to the vet. And after a while, I'm like, shut up! Shut up, control freak! You don't know it's not your business! A few times, I'm like, yes, I beat him! I beat the dog! You know, it, it, it's, just, it, it's just mental illness ninnying. The show isn't about nitpicking Alex Jones. The globalists are coming down on us. And I got to go to Bob. But I just gave the dog to my parents. He lived many years, about a few years ago. I said, you got three and a half acres with a big fence around it. You please take the dog, because I cannot handle the ninnying comments anymore. Over and over, they, they kneel up with the dog, go, what happened to your paw? What did he do to you? And you're just like, what is your major malfunction, lady? It was almost always women. What is your problem? I mean, if you saw a kid limping by their dad, it's the same thing. It's always liberal trendies. They're not really liberals. They come around the house, or I see them out in the park, and my son's got a birthmark on the side of his head. And they come over and start talking to him like I don't exist because they want to take over families. They go, what happened to you? Did somebody do something to you? And he's like, my birthmark. Really? Is it? And I'm like, shut up. You know, at a certain point, I, I, my son's there. I don't want to get mad. I'm like, listen, you, you piece of cr garbage. I'm not even going back. I'm, I'm done. Okay. Uh, let's go. I mean, here's the stupid article all, all over the place. Wh wh what does it even mean about Israel's statehood? Uh, yes. Two state proposed, 1947 should be fulfilled. This is a constant UN votes, constant fracases. And you want me to be obsessed with your fracas. Okay, what's your take on all this, Bob? Bob Chapman, do you get where I'm going with this? I am here, and uh, as the Bard said, much to do about nothing. Oh, you don't think this is giantly important, and we need to just completely no, talk about Israel all day? No, I, I, what I think is that... It's important, but uh, it, you can't be possessive about it. There's all kinds of other things going on in the world. You've got to tie them all together, and that's what you do. So, you know, just overlook these people who sometimes are more uh, aggressive than they should be. Uh, and you have your own agendas that you like, and I do too. Uh, it doesn't even fact, matter. One, of them, one of them today, we've got uh, uh, gold up uh, almost $50, and I'm almost... $25, well, actually $23 short of my prediction last week. It was going to go up 200 bucks, And uh, I'm very happy about that. And I'm very happy about the, the bankers are getting their feet screwed to the floor. Well, we're going to talk about gold coming up. And, and again, I, I shouldn't even have got mad at the guy. It's just, it's like a broken record. No, listen, you're under a lot of pressure. And he should understand that. Well, it's like a barking dog. I've got a Chihuahua as well. It knows how to get at the back door and wants to be let out. Now it, you know it, it, it wants back in, and it goes rah, rah, at, a, at a perfect frequency that, that, that drives you crazy. Now, here's what I get. I've been talking about this the whole show, Bob, and I want to get your take and your view on this first, and then we'll get into all the other news. Uh, obviously, the Wall Street Journal ran a story, didn't get really any attention. Goldman takes a dark view, a private note to hedge fund clients, gives a strategist views ways to gain from global pain. And just like with Timberwolf and other groups that they controlled, they were telling their clients, buy this, it's great, but then sending emails to each other saying, look at these idiots, this is total bleeping garbage. Now, here's the article from Economic Collapse at Infowars.com. Even Goldman Sachs secretly believes that an economic collapse is coming. Goldman Sachs is doing it again. Goldman is telling the public that everything is going to be just fine. But meanwhile, they're advising their top clients to bet on a huge financial collapse. On August 16th, a 54-page report authored by Goldman strategist Alan Brazil was attributed to uh, institutional clients. The general public was not intended to see the report. Fortunately, some folks at the Wall Street Journal got a copy of it. And they say basic total collapse, bet against it, you know, bet bet on the collapse while they have their front man. They literally bought and paid for, telling us the economy's getting better. Everything's fine. Uh, everything's fine. Bob Chapman, they've engineered this, haven't they? They certainly have, and uh, they don't care about anything other than the fact that they're going to profit from it, and in this case, their clients as well. Uh, they should have been on board a long time ago. 
We've had 11 uh, years now of upside in gold and silver, which is the antithesis of uh, a good economy, uh, good finances, etc. And they could have been doing that. No, they were shorting uh, gold and silver along with uh, the JPN, HSBC, City, and so on. And uh, that was because they didn't want gold to do well because historically it's the canary in the coal mine, so to speak. And when gold goes up and silver go up, uh, there's a problem. And they didn't want anybody to know there was a problem. Now they're saying there is a problem to a select few, and this is what we think you should do to protect yourself. Whether they talked about gold or not, I don't know. But when I can call the market the way I have, which is absolutely incredible. I, I don't ask me how I do it. Uh, all I can say that there's a hand on my shoulder doing something that I don't know how to do, but I do it anyway. And we've got them nailed. This is all part of this whole syndrome of world government, control of finances, control of currencies, burying the people so that they'll accept world government. It's an integral part of all of those things. And what you do, and what I try to do, is bring them all together in a package and explain it simply. All right, stay there. Let's come back and look at how bad the economy really is, where gold and silver's going. You know why I got irritated with that guy earlier? I am so sick of charges against me not being true. There's 98,500 results, and I'm sure it's not anywhere near that many. If you type in UN vote on Palestinian statehood, just that combination, I knew I'd read like 10 of them on the site in the last two weeks and talked about it. Attacks in Israel as Palestinian statehood gains. There's the top thing, Infowars.com. House GOP targets UN over Palestinians, Infowars.com, three days ago. Palestinian statehood, Obama's challenge. That's a daily beast. Israel stock up on stun grenades three days ago for, for UN statehood. I mean, it, it's just ridiculous how many articles we've got. And the guy, uh, it doesn't even matter. It makes me not even want to cover it even less because I'm so sick of those numbskulls, man. They're lies. Their obsession over nothing in the galaxy exists but Israel. They are Israel worshipers. The Israel bashers have given their total soul over to talking about it. It's, it's like I want to vomit, man. I, uh, uh, anyways, going back to Bob Chapman here. You just tuned in. Somebody was accusing us of not covering that. And I was like, yeah, we, I've seen those articles last week. No, you haven't. I searched it tally well. I took 10 seconds and found that. You Okay. 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 Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Ah, uh, boy. It's like these idiots saying that I, I'm siding with Gaddafi because I'm against the murder of blacks in, in Libya. Well, what does that have to do with it? There is genocide going on there. We'll get Bob Chapman's take on that. Bob, how big of a deal is it, though, that Goldman is telling their big insiders, bet against the economy, it's going to implode? How bad is it going to get? First of all, it's a very big deal because they're insider insiders. Uh, they create the inside news. Uh, they're in a position where they connect with all of the most important people in the world behind the scenes that you and I never hear about. People who are very, very powerful that if they would, somebody told us their name, we wouldn't know. And it's the admission itself to their people who are special to them sometimes as clients that, look, this is what's going to happen, and this is what we got to do to protect you. Um, I have to assume they're telling the truth. Uh, sometimes they don't. Uh, but I, I would think to these people who are their clients, they would tend to tell them the truth. And so the admission itself that we're on a one-way street and we're headed towards real economic and financial problems is, is a big thing. It's very, very important. It bears out with you and I and others like us from a different perspective have been saying for a long time. And I think that news like this gives us enormous credibility and we should capitalize on it. It's very important because they're saying the same thing that we are 
for the same reasons. Bob, aren't we in a race to get the word out that it's the globalists that engineered this? Because if we don't educate the public, as Ron Paul has said, they're going to pose as the saviors again. A, I want you to speak to that. But B, there's this weird schizophrenia, and, and, and that's what gets to me is people not being logical, where we put out our economic analysis decades before when we saw derivatives scrapped, the controls on it. You, George Humphrey, countless others I was interviewing at the time, broke it down and helped educate me about it. And now we're here. They've known the whole time. We simultaneously get called kooks for being right while the establishment itself admits this is what's going to happen. Well, that, that's typical. It happens frequently, and that's okay. We have skin, skin like the armadillos have. They don't have to have that because they're in a position to make the rules. So we're going to change that for them. Uh, three times in the last three years, the big, it's the big new Brzezinski told members of the Council on Foreign Relations, look, we got these people out there. They're telling everybody the truth. We've got to stop them. If you don't stop them, we're in serious trouble. We've talked about this on the program before, and your exact words is we're breathing down their collar. And you're right. And we're going to get them. That's why we work so hard at this. And Brzezinski's also said, basically, for the first time in history, all of humanity is awake and staring. And you see Congress with a 9%. Uh, the vast majority of Americans know the government's working against them. What do you make of the ATF now being caught knowingly shipping guns all over Latin America in containers. They weren't just letting them leave stores. That's just the first guys to blow the whistle. It turns out narcotics, trafficking, everything. And Larry Pratt brought this up. Here's Larry Pratt saying the government's dealing narcotics. And I'm not surprised. Larry knows what's going on, has for a long time. Uh, he's worked tirelessly uh, toward uh, making sure people retain their rights to have their weapons and... Uh, our, our guns, uh, I should say, for hunting and things like that. And uh, it doesn't surprise, it shouldn't surprise, the governments today are as corrupt as they've ever been. And it's just not America, it's most all of them. Stay right there, Bob. Call coming show. on a clip of Laura Ingram's radio show with uh, Dick Cheney on it. And she introduces him as Darth Vader. And Dick Cheney says he's honored to be compared to Darth Vader because of the power of Darth Vader. Well, I'm the first person I know going back about eight years ago to start comparing Dick Cheney to Darth Vader. I believe I did coin that, but not because he's powerful like Darth Vader, but because he's bionic and had all those heart attacks and was basically being kept alive. And now he literally has an artificial heart on the outside of his body and has no pulse. You can't make this stuff up. And few have lived past a year with the type of heart he's got because most people get so depressed over not having a pulse. Uh, Dick Cheney uh, on TV like turns off the. I saw a reference to him turning turning it off and laughing as the alarm goes off on TV to freak somebody out. I mean, I guess he is like Darth Vader. He is pretty tough. I mean, not even care if he doesn't have a beating heart. Just a but but you know, conservatives are like Cheney's tough. Cheney gets stuff done. He's a conservative. And then you actually look at Dick Cheney's real record. It's not conservative to butcher the Bill of Rights and Constitution. What's your view of uh, Dick Cheney now that his new book is out and everything else, Bob Chapman? Don't go hunting with him. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hey, I want to bring something else up to you. Have you seen these photos of the guy that's got six fingers and six toes? But they're not like little bitty vestigial ones. He's actually got the full deal going. No, I have not seen such. Don't know anything about it. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, pretty wild, and it's got photos of him climbing coconut trees. Uh, pretty amazing. <laughs> hey, more and more of us are going to be like that with all the GMO we're eating, and it's been proven they cause mutations. Maybe that's the new thing. Maybe some of us will have you know eight fingers, eight toes on each each. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, maybe. But uh, let's do something better than that. Let's. Try to find a way to stop GMO foods. Well, that's the thing. You know, they corner the market on environmentalism, claiming it's carbon taxes. Let's tax carbon dioxide and water vapor. But then they ignore all the real issues. Uh, what do you make of Obama announcing he's going to back off on some of the uh, carbon regulations? A, and have you seen Der Spiegel? They now say the sea level's dropping because of global warming because that kind of blew up in their face that sea levels have dropped, Bob. Well, as far as the sea levels are concerned, uh, 
uh, the past couple of years, generally speaking, worldwide, uh, things have been cooler. And so uh, they, again, still don't have a leg to stand on. And it's still gobbledygook. Uh, we know why they want carbon taxes is because they just want to rob us a little bit more worldwide, uh, not just in America. And uh, because of their control of politicians, uh, they're able to get away with legislation that causes these things to become reality, such as in Australia. I mean, the public is up in arms over their new carbon tax. Uh, businesses going out of business. Uh, some of the businesses are raising their prices by 30 and 35 and 40 percent to offset the cost of this monstrosity. It's really a private VAT paid to certain companies. And by the way, I get emails from people saying they want to see the proof. Guys, type in Australia Green Police. Australia Green Police, one of the top links, is a major paper saying home inspections to happen under Green Police. And it's from a year ago. It's now begun. It's the same global model of what they're doing. But, I mean, Bob, what do you make, though, of the fact that Obama's starting to have to back off that Al Gore's admitted that he's basically a laughing stock most places now. We're really starting to win on this issue, and that shows that these people are not invincible. You're absolutely right. It uh, came about uh, two to two and a half years ago, uh, just a little, little over two years ago, and uh, uh, that information that came out about the lies and discrepancies uh, regarding global warming, uh, those exposés, uh, they started the whole thing, uh, but yet they keep right on doing it, uh, like they were masters of the universe and everything that they said was true and they're always right, and uh, they're wrong, and uh, it's up to us to tell the world, no, those people are wrong over there, and here's why. But again, it's not just that they're wrong. They came up with a scam where they could keep their factories open and shut everybody else's down or charge people a mafia tax. Yeah, there's the headline. Australia's carbon police may enter homes. And it means not they may. I mean, they may. Like, they're allowed to. In fact, blow that up for me, please. I, I, I forget uh, which publications. I, I know it's one of their papers. Um, I'm watching on a screen across the room. That's the environmental leader. And it says federal police may be forced to become carbon cops under the Australian government's... Uh, blow it up a bit because I can't read it from that distance. Under the Australian government's... Okay, uh, you can go read the article, folks, if you want to. Under the Australian government's climate laws to cut greenhouse emissions, reports the Herald Sun. You can link to the Herald Sun. Yeah, that was the one I'd found. The guys found that one. Good job finding that uh, so quick. I mean, doesn't so much of this rest on exposing these diabolical people? That's what it's all about for us. A chapter and verse, we gather the information and we give it to them because major media is not going to do that because they control it worldwide. And, you know, you're getting them and I'm getting them. And that is emails from all over the world saying thank you for telling us the truth. Or, you know, you saved my bacon because I didn't go out and invest in bonds or stocks. And I invested gold and silver and made a whole pile of money. And, and on and on and on. I get 20 or 30 of them a day. And I certainly don't get the exposure you get. So you, you must get 100 or 200 of them a day. Uh, and thousands. that's what we're here for. Uh, we, don't, we don't care about the accolades. We don't care about getting rich. We care about saving humanity. And this is really what this is all about. But the accolades are good. The feedback's good because it's like a sonar ping. It lets you know the effect you're having. Uh, now, now, And that's Bob's point. I want to go to calls, Bob, but a few other economic numbers here. You know, they tell us inflation uh, is, uh, you know, 5 6%. What is it really? They tell us jobless numbers are 9.1. What is it really? They tell us uh, that uh, unemployment, uh, you know, is a lot lower. Uh, my number is 22%. What are the real economic numbers here? Because they've gone from telling us we left the recession three years ago or two and a half years ago to we may go back into a recession. Now they're calling it the greatest recession. How long have we technically been in a depression? Uh, two years ago, February, so that would make it 29, 30 months, something like that. And it's an inflationary depression. And I'm the only one that's come out and said that. Nobody else has. And it's been a long time now. But that's what we're going through. 
the government is talking about 3.6% inflation. John Williams, the eminent economist who uses a number of models, one of which is the model we had in 1980 to grade inflation, the CPI at that time. And he comes up with a figure of 11.2211%. And I believe John. I don't believe the government. As far as unemployment's concerned, the government's talking 9.1%. That's only U3. There's U1, U2, U3, U4, U5, and you add them all up and you get U6. Now, U6 is 16.7 approximately percent. I can't remember the exact number, but it's in that vicinity. And if you remove the birth death ratio, which is the jobs that were made or the jobs that were eliminated that they guess at, totally bogus figures. If you eliminate that, you get 22.6%. So there's your numbers. All lies. And by the way, that's that's what 60... That's what 60 Minutes came up with last November. They had 33% for California. Isn't the system losing any credibility they had left by still stonewalling and saying the economy's great when everybody knows it's not? Well, I'll tell you this. With half the population, it's working because they've been so conditioned to watching whatever newscast or listening to whatever newscast that they accept with government through these media organizations has to say. And you know something? We're never going to capture that half. They're the same half that's in, been in every country for centuries. They're just the people who don't think deeply. And the rest of the people have the world on their shoulders. And they're the people we're trying to get to. We're not going to get to all of them. But if we only get to 15 or 20 percent, it's a giant victory because these are the people who are in industry and in services. Some of them are even in government. And they are leaders or semi-leaders. And so those are the people who, generally speaking, make those kind of decisions that are important. And those are the people we're trying to reach, and we are reaching them. I mean, I get letters every day. Gee, I started listening to you two or three years ago, whatever the case, and... I did what you told me to do. I, it was really hard for me. And, gee, uh, everything I've got is doubled in value in the gold, silver arena. And I can never thank you enough. And these are very intelligent people who just didn't know, who happened to turn on the radio one day, and there we were. And they learned, and they took advantage of it. And it's okay. wonderful. To the December market now in both silver and gold is higher. Uh, next week's going to be a very good week. Uh, from the looks of it, and uh, I think you know they we might take a crack at at twenty two uh, two thousand next week. It's all very exciting, and two thousand twenty two hundred during September October would be fine. Uh, I'm looking at the end of February for thir- three thousand to thirty two hundred, and uh, silver probably sixty seventy somewhere in there. Uh, J P Morgan Chase and H S B C are going to get stuck deeply, which makes me feel very good because they're very short. And I'm seeing a lot of short covering in the gold and silver shares uh, and of all ki- types. I can't believe, and I was a trader for 25 years, I can't believe they're shorting stocks at 50 cents that are now selling at 75, and they're short millions of shares, mostly naked, and they're doing the big stocks too. So you're but saying in layman's terms, the bag that they're in. you're saying in layman's terms, they're doing very reckless things right now. They have been, and the tide is turning against them. Mm. And uh, take some big losses. And Goldman Sachs internally is telling the insiders collapse. Uh, and they're talking about as early as three months from now. Do you concur with that analysis? Uh, very possible. And they got Mr. Blank Fine. Uh, that's the fellow who's the... CEO of that company, Goldman Sachs, who told us that he was doing God's work. (laughs) And I think they're going to indict him. We'll get the details later. He's hired a criminal attorney, so it's pretty serious. Let's go to Jeremy in Wisconsin. Thanks for holding, Jeremy. Then we'll go to Cliff and others. Welcome, Jeremy. Hi. Uh, I was just calling today to uh, 
get some help from your listeners. I, I started, when you were started doing the Google bombs, I started doing my own little little uh, info war here with Yahoo's homepage. Um, on their homepage, they always have news articles, and I would find a news article from your website that would relate to the website that Yahoo would have on. And I was copying and pasting it. I'm the, seeing a lot of that. I'm seeing InfoWars pasted in to big news articles all over the place. Very effective. Thank you. Yeah, well, I, I need help, uh, hopefully, with more people doing it, because I, I think Yahoo has blocked me now from, from doing this, because now whenever I log in and I try to read an article relating to the war, anything political, it won't let me post a comment anymore. But I can post a comment on, you know, a sports article or any other stupid article well you've got to just get a new username or use a new email to get in that's all you gotta do yeah that's all you gotta do all uh, right uh, but yeah everybody should swarm the yahoo news pages uh, and many others you got any questions or comments about anything else in the news yeah, i do have a question about um buying ammo i know you talk about uh the feds raiding people who have over a thousand rounds of ammo in their house and i was trying to buy some some ammo but i'm worried about buying it online um, do, you mean, do you know if I should be worried about that? Well, let me be clear. You probably got a one chance, let's just guesstimation, one chance out of 10,000 to buy ammo and get visited. They're doing it and publicizing it with the media all over the country where somebody buys 1,000 rounds, I've seen as low as 500, and cops come to your door and, and ask, why have you done this? And you're like, because I like to get a good price. And you get a lot better deal. That's the only way you get a good deal. So they're just doing it to act like you're criminal. It's like this new ATF regulation that's not law where you buy two or more rifles and they come visit you and they put you in a database. You're doing a nix. They know you're buying two rifles. It's just about acting like it's criminal. It's all part of theater with these people. Uh, and so buy all the ammo you want. And if they come to your door, laugh at them. You know, it's time to go, look, crooks, you're crooks. You know, I mean, it's time to stop kiss kissing their, their you know what. I, I, Bob, any comments on this? Well, if they went to my house when I was living in the United States, and they would have found 250,000 rounds. And that would have given them something to think about. <laughs> oh, boy. I appreciate your call there. Sure, Evans, our guest. Let's go to uh, Cliff in Arkansas. Cliff, you're on the air. Thanks for holding, sir. No problem, Matt. Uh, there's one thing I wanted to have everybody to actually realize is that if you take all the so-called conspiracies, like uh, uh, ATF taking guns, uh, uh, federal agents taking gold and silver away from normal people. And what I believe is that the government is basically trying to, or the globalists are basically trying to get to where you can't defend yourself. And if you do get a way to defend yourself, you can't have or set up a another economy without their help. No, that's it. No, no, of course. That's what GMO is about worldwide. It's about taking over economies where you're dependent. That's the key to slavery. And now the feds are calling themselves, this was in the um, Palm Beach Post yesterday, the federal family, and they teach them, FEMA is basically, uh, you can't make this up, the head of the new federal family, like La Cosa Nostra, our thing, the family. Bob Chapman. Agreed. And also along with intimidation, and that's a very, very important part of it, uh, to be terrified that maybe they're going to come and get you because you bought 500 rounds of ammo or uh, you own 10 uh, American Eagles or whatever. And uh, their influence uh, on the economy or economies of the world and uh, bringing on this entrapment process where people become enslaved, as you say. And. And and more and more, I mean, it's like arresting people and charging them with life in prison for videotaping police in public. They know it's not illegal. They're there to try to scare people. And look, you don't lay down to bullies, folks. That isn't going to appease them. It's time to say, look, good people in government better decide to join with other good people. At the end of the day, Bob, I, I think God's put me here and put you here so people at least hear the truth and they have a chance to make the decision what side they're on in eternity. Absolutely. And, you know, I never, ever thought that I would ever end up in this position. I mean, when I retired as a stockbroker at 52 years old and I got bored and I started the publication from scratch, uh, I never knew 
that there was a whole new meaning in life for me and something for me to do, uh, which was very helpful to other people. Yeah, appreciate the call, Cliff. Good points. Ken in Alabama, you're on the air. Hello, Alex. I'm a first-time caller. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Honor and privilege to talk to you, sir. Uh, you kind of stole my thunder there. You've already mentioned his name, but I was just going to tell you about a great website run by a guy by the name of John Williams, who is a great economist and statistician. And when you go to his website, shadowstats.com, shadowstats.com, and you click on the alternate data, he's got some great graphs and charts there. And uh, one of them uh, particularly I was interested in is the GDP, the gross domestic product, because he's quoting it uh, the way it really is after you subtract the high rate of inflation, which is now about 10% or more. He's uh, showing the economy in negative territory and headed down. It's uh, about a negative 3% right now, so the economy is definitely shrinking right now. Yeah, I, I want to get John Williams on. We've sent a few emails over the years. Perhaps listeners should hit him up. Uh, but uh, Bob is on par with Williams, maybe even better in some ways, but very respected. We want to get him on dealing with that. Bob Chapman, your comments. Well, I don't compliment a lot of people, but uh, uh, he's doing a great job, and he's wonderful at what he does. Uh, I can't say enough nice things about him. I don't know him personally. I just know his work, and if you can get him on, I think that would be wonderful because I think it would give people an insight to the things that I just kind of gloss over because I, I cover so many avenues. Sure, he just, covers, he just covers the fake stats. Thank you so much, uh, caller. Bob, what about it. this article uh, in the New York Times? U.S. is set to sue a dozen big banks over mortgages. Um, the federal government's openly bankrolled by these big banks, bought and paid for. And generally, I've seen them do these investigations just to politicize it and then slap a few wrists or send some low-level guy to prison for 10 years. And they actually do investigations to kind of cover things up. It came out two weeks ago, the SEC, as you've said, for decades. But now it's public, would destroy evidence of uh, criminal activity, protected Madoff for 11 years, chief amongst it. Uh, but uh, what's your view? Do you have any faith on this, Bob Chapman? I think it's uh, another uh, attempt to make it look like government is trying to protect the people. Uh, as you say, nothing will come of it. They go through the motions, and if anything, the worst possible thing probably is there'll be a fine. Uh, they haven't turned it over to the Justice Department, which means it's not a possible uh, criminal action. So um, as long as they stay in the SEC realm, uh, it's the wrist slap, and, and that's it. And, you know, outrageous fines. Uh, which is which the corporations pay. Uh, probably 95% of the fines to individuals who work for brokerage firms or small firms and so on, they never get paid. Let's talk Most to, people don't know that. They just ignore them. They just don't pay them. Let's talk to Otter and Mass. Otter, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Go ahead. Hey, how are you today? Good, buddy. I know you're not feeling 100%, so I think the first and most important thing that I can say is uh, my prayers to you, your family, your crew. We love you people. You're all doing great uh, prayers for Ron Paul, Russell Means, and for our republic. It seems to me there's just so much. You cover it all. It's really tough to narrow it down and, and pick a point. So it seems like the most important topic of the day is the potential for impeachment, the fast and furious operations, the different psyops that they play in. Um, UN Resolution 21, all of these different distractions, it, it hurts me. It actually physically hurts me to hear someone like that person call before and, and then upset you, especially when I know that your throat, and I have respiratory issues, you know that, uh, is giving you trouble. And you know the sock puppet thing, and you know the dissemination thing, and you're a, a nice man, and you don't ask people in advance what are you calling about? And if they begin to talk about something different... Well, you're nice to defend me. I'm just grumpy today. You know, it's, 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 it's like the Chinese water torture, where, where millions of times they ask the same stupid thing, and it's not right what they're saying, and then you go look, and they're wrong again, and it's like, you know, they're like, answer for this issue, answer for that issue, and it's never true, and then there's no way to respond, and I'm trying to just wake people up to deal with the major corruption... And I see so many people that are awake in the liberty movement just chasing each other's tails and fighting. But God bless you, Otter. I, I appreciate that. Let's jam in LT in Pennsylvania. Get a final comment from Bob. LT, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I would like to see uh, everyone start a garden next spring with uh, seeds, uh, heirloom seeds. Yes. Also, 
Also, I would like to read this and have Bob uh, comment. Okay, real quick. <clears throat> okay, uh, I think I know why our military has more deaths per month from suicide than combat. <clears throat> we recently had a committee composed of puppets for the Queen's corporations say the only cuts to military they would consider are cuts to soldiers, pay, health care, and pensions. Yeah. <clears throat> I believe that time, one of the many dual, dual citizens always found in presidential um, boards. So we're uh, almost out of time, and I can't go in any more overdrive, but make your point. Okay, well, it is very important we point out to our brave soldiers that they are modern-day mercenaries for the crown, just just like Hessian soldiers. I totally agree with you. Bob Chapman, final word. We'll see you back, Lord willing, next Friday. I agree, and uh, it's been a great program, and I'll be back next Friday, and thanks for having me on. You bet. Folks, we'll see you tonight. Thank you, Bob. See you next Friday.